In this video, I will use two examples to explain how to solve for the statically indeterminate beams using the basic method, method of integration. In the next video, I will solve the same two examples using a simpler method, method of superposition. Let's look at this example. For this overhanging beam, it has one fixed end at point A, and it is also supported by a roller support at point B, and it is subjected to a 9 kN external force at point C. And we need to determine all the support reactions at the fixed support A as well as the roller support B. So we proceed with this problem as we usually do by starting with drawing the free body diagram, marking all the unknown support reactions on the free body diagram, and writing our three equilibrium equations for a 2D static problem. And we will realize that we have overall four unknowns, but only three equations. Therefore, this is again a statically indeterminate member, and we cannot solve for all the unknowns using equilibrium alone. So just like with the statically indeterminate problems involving axial loadings or torsional loadings that we've learned before, for these statically indeterminate beams subjected to shear force and bending moment, we also need to look for compatibility condition in order to solve the problem. Just like what we did before, now we also need to incorporate our knowledge of the deformation caused by shear force and bending moment, in other words, the elastic curve. So now we need to construct the elastic curve of this beam. If you recall from the previous lecture, the elastic curve is the graph of the deflection function, which is determined by integrating the bending moment function twice within the restraints of boundary conditions and continuity conditions. Therefore, we need to first determine the bending moment function of this beam as a function of position x. To determine the bending moment function, again, we will use the method of sections. And for this problem, we will need to section this beam twice. At this point, you might be wondering, we cannot solve for the bending moment for sure. That is correct. Therefore, what we are trying to achieve here is simply to express the bending moment function using the unknowns. Since Ax is 0, we can eliminate it from our free body diagram. Now we have two equations and three unknowns. So at section one, this is the arbitrary length x, and these are the internal shear force and bending moment at this location. And since we are only interested in the bending moment function, we only need to write a moment equilibrium equation and solve for mx as a function in terms of the unknowns ay and ma. This is our first equation in our bending moment function. For the second section, you can still choose the left segment for analysis. However, it might be more convenient to choose the right segment. And we mark the internal shear force and bending moment at this location according to the sign conventions for right segment. Keep in mind though, according to the way we set up our x-axis, this length here is still our arbitrary x. And this length of the right segment is the total length 1.8 meter minus x. Therefore, for the right segment, we write our moment equilibrium equation and solve for our second equation for the internal bending moment function, which is, as you can see, completely determined. So now we have expressed our internal bending moment function as a piecewise function. The first equation contains the unknown reactions Ay and Ma. The second equation does not, which makes this problem a little simpler. Now it's time to integrate this internal bending moment function in order to get the deflection function. So the internal bending moment function integrated once integrated a second time with respect to x. And as you can see, during the integration processes, these constants were inevitably generated. And we need to evaluate these constants using boundary conditions as well as continuity conditions as we learned in the previous lecture. 
In order to apply the boundary conditions and continuity conditions, we need to first use our existing knowledge to predict how this beam is going to deform under this loading. And we can sketch an approximate elastic curve. At point A, we have a fixed support, which means that this beam is not allowed to move. Therefore, its deflection calculated by equation one must be zero. Also because of the fixed support, the beam is not allowed to rotate as well. Therefore, the slope of the elastic curve at point A, which is when x equals to zero, must be zero as well. At point B, the deflection of the beam is also zero. And this deflection can be calculated by either equation one or equation two. At point B, the slope of the elastic curve is not zero. However, it must be the same calculated from equation one or equation two. And lastly, we still have the two equilibrium equations. So overall, we have seven equations and seven unknowns. Therefore, we can solve this system of linear equations for all seven unknowns. So these are the support reactions we were looking for solved from a system of linear equations. And don't forget the constants in the deflection function were solved simultaneously. And as soon as we know the material property Young's modulus E and the geometric property, the area moment of inertia I, we can determine the deflection function and the elastic curve for this beam. Let's look at this example. This continuous beam is supported by a pin support at point A and two roller supports at point B and C. And we need to determine all the support reactions. Again, we start with the free body diagram showing all four unknown support reactions. And we write our equilibrium equations. We have three for a 2D static problem. And since Cx equals to zero, we can eliminate it from our free body diagram. We end up with two independent equations, but three unknowns. Again, we cannot solve this problem using equilibrium conditions alone. Again, this is a statically indeterminate member. We're going to apply compatibility condition, which comes from the elastic curve. To do that, again, we're going to use the method of integration, and we need to first determine the internal bending moment function in terms of the unknown reactions. So we set up our x axis, and for this beam, we need to section this member three times. The first section occurs here. At section one, this is our arbitrary length x, and these are the internal shear force and bending moment at this location. We can write the moment equilibrium equation and solve for mx as a function of x in terms of the unknown support reaction ay. For the second section, we put it here between point B and this 400 pound external loading. For the second section, we can choose the left segment for analysis, but for convenience, let's again choose the right segment and draw our internal shear force and bending moment according to the sign conventions for the right segment. And don't forget, once again, this is our arbitrary length x. And this length right here is the total length 8 feet minus x. And this length is 6 feet minus x. So now we can write the moment equilibrium equation for the right segment at a point of the section and solve for mx as a function of x, but in terms of the unknown support reaction cy. Lastly, we section the member between the 400 pound loading and point C. For section three, again, for convenience, we choose the right segment for analysis. This is our arbitrary length x, and this is the total length eight feet minus x, and we write the moment equilibrium equation for the right segment at the point of section and solve for mx, again, as a function of x in terms of the unknown support reaction cy. So now we have the internal bending moment function 
as a piecewise function. It is a function of location x with the unknown support reactions, and we need to integrate it twice in order to get the deflection function. The internal bending moment function integrated once and again. And as you can see, inevitably, six constants were generated during the process of the integration. And these constants need to be evaluated through the boundary conditions and continuity conditions. Again, based on our existing knowledge, we need to sketch an approximate elastic curve for this beam, predicting how it's going to deform under the applied loadings. In our deflection function, we have three equations, and these three equations apply to these three regions on this beam. At point A, the deflection evaluated by equation 1 must be 0. At point B, the deflection evaluated by both equation 1 and 2 must be 0. Also, the slope of the elastic curve at point B evaluated by equation 1 and 2 must be the same. At this point, the deflection evaluated by equation 2 and 3 must be the same. Also, the slope of the elastic curve evaluated by equation 2 and 3 must be the same as well. And lastly, at point C, the deflection evaluated by equation 3 must be 0. Based on all that, we come up with 7 compatibility condition equations. And don't forget, we still have 2 equilibrium equations. So overall, we have 9 equations and 9 unknowns, and we need to solve for this linear system for all 9 unknowns. And these are the solutions. Also, since constants C1 through C6 were solved simultaneously, as long as we know the material property and the geometric property of this beam, we can determine its deflection function and elastic curve as well. As you can see, method of integration is tedious and calculation intensive. However, it is the basic method to solve this type of problem, and I hope you can master it. In the next video, though, we are going to revisit these two examples using a simpler method, method of superposition.